What's up once again, Hashtag Nation, joining me for another installment as we talk about the new Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Ryan joins me again. Make sure you hit that like button. let lets YouTube know this is a good video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to join Hashtag Nation. Let's go see what we get to talk about. I always got to say this at the beginning of every episode. Make sure you hit up our link tree. You can't be named Hashtag Sports without having some socials. So TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, make sure you hit it all up. All episodes will be on iTunes and Spotify upon completion. Uh, Mr. Rogers Holmes is the sponsor of this show. My co-pilot is Ryan Lacel. You guys all have seen his awesome tweets on Twitter. If you haven't, go follow him as well. <laughs> uh, Ryan, we 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 were just talking about what do the Buffalo Bills really need? Like, what is something that they need? Uh, you know, offensively, defensively, all that stuff. If you haven't hit the episode, it'll be above Ryan's head very shortly. But the other thing is this: the Killer Bees. We talked about what is going to happen. We had it. You had a head coach who was the defensive coordinator who was calling all the plays. You had an assistant head coach, defensive coordinator, who is now in Chicago. And now you took the interim tag off of Brady. You decided to promote linebackers coach Bobby Babich. Natural progression of how things go. You have the second youngest coordinator pair in the league. Uh, Whoever knows who the youngest pair is, drop it in the comments. You get a prize. Um, (laughs) Ryan will come visit you. No, God, please, no. But the point is this. With these two now in the fold, you know, we had time to digest it, think about it. Now these two in the fold, what is your expectations for the Buffalo Bills going into 2024 and beyond? Can I, can I first just comment that you have been here for a while, Mario. And I, and I say that half jokingly, but (laughs) there's an offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. that's officially younger than I am. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure quite how to feel because I, I've been avoiding the old man stage of my mm-hmm. life. I feel like now I officially have to enter the old man phase in my oh, life. Oh, wait, wait till the, you've already seen it, though. I, I get those. a head coach younger than me. Then I'm really going to hit rock bottom, I feel like. <laughs> I don't. Wasn't McVeigh younger than you when he was hired? I don't, I don't, I don't know. McVay, I don't, well, but he would still um, be younger than me, technically, if he was younger than me when he got hired. True. True. Yeah, <laughs> that math ain't math in there. <laughs> but the when when they always announce the finalists for the uh, Hall of Fame, yeah, that's when I I'm sitting oh, yeah. there going, guys, like, oh yeah, I remember watching him play. Now like, <laughs> I remember, I remember getting drafted. <laughs> vividly remembering like the bulk of their career came <laughs> when I was conscious of football. Like, okay, yeah, that's that's a problem. But that's I funny. mean, so in terms of what what to expect, let's start on the offensive side of the ball, right? Like, yes. I think. You know, Mario, you know enough about the about football that I, I think we can all agree that we weren't necessarily seeing a Joe Brady offense. Um, no, since he took over for the Buffalo Bills, right? Like to, to change midstream like that, there's just too much that's already in motion. That 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 was largely a that was largely a, a, a Ken Dorsey offense with Joe Brady calling the plays. So yes. I think I think it's worth Bills fans understanding that fact of things that. You know, a lot of what we saw, the 12 personnel, things like that. I, I don't know how much of that is necessarily going to continue. Um, yeah. I don't know what the offense is going to look like. Um, I think one thing we can tell from the way that the plays were called is that Joe Brady understands that Josh Allen is the straw that stirs the drink for the Buffalo Bills offense, right? He's not yeah. going to be under, any under delusions of grandeur that, you know, they need to go through James Cook in order to be a productive offense. Now, Sean McDermott wants to run the football. We know that. Yes. Uh, but what we saw was that Joe Brady was like, okay, we'll run the ball, but it's going to be in, in the, you know, in the frame of a Josh Allen quarterback draw or a Josh Allen RPO, or, you know, we're, we're not going to do these shotgun, you know, these, these, these draw plays to, uh, <laughs> Um, you know, these, these sweep, you know, wide runs by James Cook. Um, that's not how we're going to, how we're going to move the football. Like we're going to move the football through Josh Allen. Yeah. Um, I think a, another thing that we're going to see is Joe Brady do a better job than Ken Dorsey did of protecting Josh Allen from himself. Um, we saw that a lot with Joe, with Ken Dorsey, where he would call a lot of these, like you and I joke about it. It's, it's like chaos, Josh, right. And these YOLO yeah. balls. Well, what we saw was Ken Dorsey called a lot of plays with YOLO opportunity balls in 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 the pattern. And what what I thought Joe Brady did a better job of 
was he didn't call those plays, right? Like the best no. way to prevent Josh Allen from throwing the YOLO balls is just don't call plays with those types of routes in them. And I think that's <laughs> one of the good things that we saw. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit more in the game against the Chiefs, specifically yeah. like towards the end of the game there. You, I mean, we were there in the in the crowd. And we, we didn't, you know, run the ball, right? Second nine, yeah, run the ball, don't throw it. And they kind of, you know, I don't know whether Josh checked out of it. I don't know what happened there, but I think yeah. I thought, they should have run the football, called a run, called Josh's number with the run, and I think he probably would have been okay with not not throwing it. And that's ultimately what was their downfall was just, you know, the offense didn't execute what was working towards the end of the game, and I, you know, obviously that that went away from. Him. So offensively, I think that's kind of what we're looking at is Joe, what Joe Brady's offense is going to look like. Because what we saw was a Ken Dorsey offense being called by Joe Brady, which you know I, I don't know how how much comfort level there was um, yeah. from Brady on that. Well, I think obviously being the quarterback coach, you have some input in what goes sure. in as far as play. And I think what what was highlighted with when they made the shift from Dorsey to Brady is the fact that there, you saw a clear difference in a play designer versus a play caller. Yes, you know he had a very good feel for it. I was actually, you know, when you said, oh, he did a better job of protecting uh, Josh Allen, I was, I, I kind of flinched for a second because Josh Allen, the way that he plays football is not a recipe for a long-term, you know, success in the NFL. Like it's, it's, he's going to be, you know, he, he can't do the things that he does now when he's 34. Mm -hmm. And right. those things are going to be very, con like I, I was adamant when Dorsey got fired, I was adamant on the fact that, I, and I end up backing off of it a little bit. I know that Dorsey's a great play designer. He's not a great play caller. He doesn't have a feel for the game. And you know, like you said, with the YOLO balls, don't give uh, don't give Allen the option to do that because he's going right. to take it every single time. Uh, but I really think they, you know, being a McDermott, having a front row seat for what happened to Cam Newton and the beating that he took down in Carolina. Obviously, there's a two six foot five guys that are huge that are really hard to bring down. All those hits add up. So sure. I don't I don't think they wanted Josh to run the ball as much. So I think that's what Dorsey was trying to avoid a little bit earlier in the year because we did we did a statistical breakdown of the first like eight games of Josh Allen in 2023. And the fact is he was like he's not running nearly right. as much as he did. And then Brady takes over and you start to see Allen have eight, nine, seven carries each game. And they're they're very meaningful carries. And we're like, oh, this is great. All right. But the kid's 27 years old. Mm -hmm. And he can't play like this at 34. So that's the only kind of, you know, reservation that I have as far as Brady goes forward. But I am I can't wait to see what he is going to bring, especially if the Buffalo Bills, which a lot of people are talking about, take an offensive weapon in the draft. What is Brady going to be able to do with these guys, with all these players? Like you talked about Knox and, uh, Knox and Kincaid. Obviously, when you burn a first round pick on a player and you pay a player as much as they as, as much as Knox is getting paid. You either have to do two things. You either have to try to trade one of them, or you you're gonna have to put them on the field. They right. have to yeah. be on the field. So it's interesting to see what dynamic will happen for Joe Brady in 2024 and beyond. But you got a guy who has seen success. Obviously, he was in Carolina, but he was at LSU. So you were able to he was able to see what explosive wide receivers are able to do in you know being the passing game coordinator there. And he was with what was he with Chase and uh, Chase and Jefferson? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, fair. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm very interested to see what Brady brings to the table in 2024 and how different this offense may look. Like we may get more James Cook, but it's going to be because of the like you said, the threat of Josh Allen with an RPO, mm -hmm. or it's going to be he's going to be grinding between the tackles because you have an incumbent offensive line that had a year under Cromer, you know, and with Brady there at the helm calling the plays. Josh was the least sacked quarterback in the NFL. Obviously, some of that does go to Dorsey because he called beginning of the year. But what is your, if I just say, what is your worry about Brady? Like, what is one thing that kind of gives you a little bit of reservation about Joe Brady heading into 2024? Um, I mean, we we've seen who Joe Brady is as an offensive coordinator when he was in with Carolina. Um, yes, but I mean, they didn't have great quarterback play when he was in Carolina either. No. Um, I think, I think what we'll be telling is we, we talked in the last episode about the, uh, the, what they, what they do in the draft, right? If they go, if they go offense early in the draft, wide receiver, big boundary guy, you know, that I think will point to what type of offense Joe Brady wants to run. Does he want to run an offense like 
he ran this year, or does he want to run an offense like he ran at LSU, where he's just got two big body guys on the outside that can catch the ball, go up and get it, um, and and you know throw the ball downfield, right? Um, my worry is that he's going to be a yes man for Sean McDermott, which means that we're going to come out in 2023 and we're going to see, or 2024, and we're going to see a lot less Josh running the football. You're absolutely yeah. right. Josh Allen cannot run the football when he's 34, 35 years old. Mm -hmm. That's on Josh Allen to reinvent the way that he plays football when that time comes. Yes. Right. For now, Josh Allen is the best in the NFL when he's on the move. And mm -hmm. I and I say that knowing that Lamar Jackson's in the league, right? Like Lamar Jackson is the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL with his feet. But Josh Allen is the most dangerous quarterback in the NFL when he's on the move. There's two that's a two very yes. different things, and it's worth Completely. pointing that out, right? Yeah. Like Josh Allen, when he's on the move, is the most dangerous weapon in the NFL. And we we joke about it, we laugh about it, but it's true. It's it's chaos, Josh. When he gets out and starts to run and breaks the breaks the um the pocket, the defenses have so many different things to worry about. Right. Is he going to yeah. run by me? Is he going to run through me? Is he going to jump over me? Is he going to throw yeah. the ball? And when he does throw the ball, most quarterbacks in the NFL, when they're rolling to one side of the field, they're going to throw to that side of the field. Josh Allen can still throw to every part of the field when he's on the run. And that's a big <laughs> problem for defenses who, you know, we, we talked about it after the Miami game. He makes that throw where he's like 0.2 yards away from the, the sideline. You don't prepare for those plays because <laughs> no one can make those plays, right? Well, Josh Allen can make the plays that nobody else can make, which is why it's so difficult for defenses to adjust to him because you don't practice against that, right? Like the scout team no. offense can't do what Josh Allen does. So, mm -hmm. you know, from Lamar Jackson, right? Like stick Deontay Hardy at quarterback and let him go do it. And like, that's fairly similar to what Lamar Jackson can do. He can't throw the ball as well, but you know, when he's yeah. on the move, that's it's fairly similar. So you, you can't do that with Josh Allen, right? Like you can't take Matt Milano and put him at quarterback and just be like, just go be Josh, right? Like that doesn't work. <laughs> so what I'm worried about, what my biggest worry for Joe Brady is not what type of offense am I going to see from him. My biggest worry is how much is he going to let Sean McDermott impact the way he designs plays and calls plays for Josh Allen because we've seen that a yes man doesn't work at the offensive coordinator no. position. Mm -mm. Dable didn't, wasn't a yes man. And it was the best offense we've seen <laughs> since then. Right. So yeah, Joe yeah. Brady going to come out and say, Sean, all due respect. I appreciate what you're saying, but I'm going to go out and put a, a good offense on the field. And that includes Josh running it six to eight times a game. It is what it is. I hope that those conversations yeah. were had before they took the, the, you know, the interim tag off of him. But yeah. that's my, that's my biggest concern. Yeah, that's you got to think about it too. He's 34 years old. So if he goes out there and puts up, for lack of a better term, a resume on the field of an explosive offense, you know, I mean, sometimes it, it might hinder him a little bit because of the things that you said. Allen can do things that are outside of the playbook and outside of the script. So if you're not giving a guy like Josh Allen, how are you going to do that? Like, who's the other guy in the league that you think could replicate things that Josh Allen does? He's in Indianapolis. I mean, he got hurt this year, but yeah. Richardson was was earmarked as one of those guys that can do everything that Allen does. Plus, he has the size. So, uh, like, I mean, Anthony Richardson flew up draft boards because of Josh Allen, right? Like yes, that that's why they drafted him so high is because he's that project prototype. If I could mold a quarterback out of clay, that would be who I would who I yeah. would put together, right? Now, does he have it between the hat between the ears? I don't know, but I'll figure it out. That's kind of why Josh was drafted so high. Um, Ryan Leaf, I believe, someone described him as um but that's why Anthony Richardson because Josh Allen worked out for the Bills pretty well I'd say I think you're going to see a lot of those guys start to fly up draft oh absolutely because everyone's going to be like oh he's the next Josh Allen like go get yeah. him kind of thing yeah and I love that you put the distinction of Lamar Jackson being the most dangerous with his feet and Allen yep. being the most dangerous on the move because like you said you have to cover the entire field when he rolls like you mm -hmm. there's no field that he can't there's no part of the field you can't reach and it made me laugh because it reminded me of uh remind me of Randall Cunningham back in the day they used to I mean Belichick used to have a, a saying obviously when he was coaching he was defensive coordinator for the Giants they they say GTFB 
every time Randall rolls, you got to go GTFB, <laughs> get that yeah. back. So it, it was, it was really funny that you were saying that. So like, yeah, that, those, those are, like I said, I highlighted my reservations about Brady. I just, I just don't want to see Josh uh, run so much. And like you said, that's on Josh. If he calls, you know, he calls an RPO or he calls, he call, you know, if, if Allen comes up to the line and starts yelling, kill, 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 and then you see Allen drop back and then just take off. Well, hey, I, I ran I ran a draw to Cook. Yeah. He changed it. So he has to try to get that happy medium with Allen. And, and the fact is, I mean, Allen's 27, he's 34. So they're mm-hmm. going to have a, a very close relationship, even closer than – they're going to be like two kids with McDermott being their dad. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't like what he's saying. Like, well, let's just do what we want to do. We'll, we'll yeah. score some points here. So um, that's interesting. 